Thanks for having me. So today happened to be the International Day of Happiness and I know it maybe feels kind of at this uncertain time that we don't have that much to be happy about but something that I'm doing at the minute is trying to keep people smiling and laughing and honestly it makes me feel better um, and I just hope it makes others feel better too. So I'm Emer McGuire, I am a musical comedian and I thought today I could have a bit of a chat about how or why we find things funny And then I thought I could sing you a new comedy song that I have written for this very strange, socially distant time that we're in. So there are a few weird and wonderful theories on why we find certain things funny. And I think you can't really make comedy into a formula uh, because there's no real accounting for people who are just funny people, people who are naturals. Um, But I think it can be interesting to think about some of the theories that have persisted through time about humour. And there are a couple of well-known philosophers, people like Aristotle, um, Descartes, um, Plato, the great thinker, not the not the stuff you used to play with when you're away. And those guys kind of think that we laugh at things that make us feel superior, things that we feel superior about in terms of others. Um, and that sounds a little bit silly at first, but you think about it, don't we always kind of think it's funny if we're watching a show where the character is the butt of the joke? Um, like how hilarious is anything said by Father Dougal Maguire, no relation, and Father Ted. And he is famously silly. He's incredibly silly. silly. He's made out to be very idiotic. Um, and these philosophers think, I'm sure they didn't watch Father Ted right enough, but they think that that sense of superiority gives us a form of amusement. It really adds to the amusement that we feel. Now think about it the other way around. Have you ever been the butt of a joke? Maybe in your sibling group, in your family, in your friendship group? Um, do you ever find that amusing? No, because at that time we are inferior in the situation. Um, so that kind of shows you that kind of feeling superior as opposed to inferior can be something that can amuse us as humans. There's another theory that says that we find things funny if they are incongruent or absurd. Um, that kind of makes sense in terms of slapstick humour and things. But if something doesn't really fit right in our heads, if we can't make sense of it, even for a brief second, uh, it makes us laugh. Now, the best way to think about that, I think, you know, if you do something silly in front of a toddler, they will laugh their head off for ages. You know, something they can't make sense of. Peekaboo, oh, where have you gone? Oh, suddenly you're back. It's very, very silly. You know, that's that's how you kind of think about it. But there's a really well-known joke that's a good example of this. So two goldfish are in a tank. And one turns to the other and says, here, do you have any idea how to drive this thing? Now, originally, you picture a fish tank, so there's some kind of level of letting our brain catch up with the absurd image of two fish driving a tank. And it's not the most hilarious joke in the world, but it's perfect for explaining how jokes that kind of cleverly defy our expectation can get a bit of a smile or a bit of a laugh. And then more recently in psychology, there's this theory about the psychology of humour by a guy, um, by a guy, and he is called Peter McGraw, and it's called the benign violation theory. So the benign violation theory says that we find things funny if they meet two conditions. So condition one, they kind of violate the way we think about the world and how it works, just like the absurd theory that I've just talked about. And condition two, it's benign. It's harmless. It's playful. There has to be really no harm intended. So the violation part can be, you know, someone saying something that they're not supposed to. You know, someone saying something and everyone giggles because they know that that's not what they're meant to say. Like the classic, absolute classic Freudian slip. That always makes people laugh. It always makes me laugh. Um, I love pointing out whenever people do it. And quite recently, actually, at work, my computer was broken and my boss asked, you know, well, what did you do? And I just said, well, I meant to say I turned it on. Um, and instead I said it turned me on. Um, and the office kind of went into this flux of, of laughter. And it was kind of the mix on my part. 
the laughter was coming from me saying something that I didn't mean to say. Also, kind of the level of embarrassment of saying something like that to my boss. Um, and also kind of wishing the ground would open up and swallow me alive. So those kind of things do make us laugh as well. Think about people who laugh nervously. If you have a l- nervous laugh at a time you're supposed to be quiet in school um, and suddenly the whole class is laughing. Or people who laugh nervously at funerals. So there's that kind of viol- violating society um, thing there. And then the benign part of it means... That the violation part has to be okay enough to make us laugh. So it has to be acceptable. Now, that means it has to be playful. Um, it can't be too genuinely distasteful or too offensive. So there are lots of things that you could talk about in the world. Terrible things that happen. That if you mention them, people will be very offended and very hurt. That you can't make into a joke. But if there's something that... It would be obvious you're being playful about and joking about, you know, you can get away with it a little bit more. Um, so I hope you find some of those theories, some of those theories interesting. You know, this is this is the type of thing that I have lots of time to consider now that we're all being isolated. Just think about theories of what makes us funny. But um, to be honest, I feel that they give you something to think about, yes. But I feel like for me, I just write songs that I think are funny and I enjoy it because I enjoy making people laugh and I love music and I love putting those things together. And I've kind of gone back over my songs um, to see if some key themes come out in the way that I write songs. And a few of the things that I've kind of noticed about my comedy and, and that other people notice. The first thing is that it's relatable. Now that's probably the most frequent comment that I would get. People would say to me at gigs or send me messages on Facebook about it being very relatable. That they kind of would tag their friends or family that will relate to a particular song. And I like that because, you know, I write about my life, what I know and situations that I want people to relate to so they can see the humour in it. Um, Like I've written songs about... uh, being socially awkward or, or, or falling in love on Instagram, all those kind of things that I feel that people people can <laughs> relate to. Um, also, I think you should kind of present comedy in, in a novel way to suit your personality. Like, I feel like I don't tell jokes. Like, I've never sat down and written a joke. I kind of just, at gigs, tell stories and, and write songs because... That's what I do with my friends, so that's kind of what I do on stage. So find your best medium would be another tip. Um, one that I've been thinking about is the fact that a lot of my stories have a punchline, classic punchline. Um, but then, as I've been watching a few of my stories and songs back, I've noticed that some of those will be quickly followed by another punchline and then another. Um, and the good thing about that is it makes people feel like, you know, they keep keep laughing, which is quite lovely. So. For example, I I tell a story and have a song about being a middle child, you know, and all the horrendous things that come along with that. Um, And as a middle child, I talk about, at gigs, how you're usually banished to the middle seat in childhood in the back of the car. And at that point, audiences start to nod and think, oh, yes, yes, I was banished to the middle seat. Um, And then I kind of say, well, you know, me and my brother were both middle children. So my parents started to rotate us in and out of the boot. Uh, which is another kind of bit of a punchline and that's usually the punchline people laugh at and as they're laughing kind of I throw in the fact that you know my dad is actually an undertaker which means the boot is an odd place to be so then you see people kind of taking a, a second to understand and then in their head getting a picture of these kids being rotated in and out of the boot of an undertaker's car and then people you know kind of get that sense that they're kind of constantly laughing and there's a little bit of absurdity in it as well um so that's that's something that I like to do kind of have a punchline but then kind of twist the joke at the end and then twist it again so people aren't expecting it um being topical I think is always good uh be reactive to current events I kind of avoid anything offensive or or too distasteful that's just my preference because I kind of enjoy mainstream comedy. Um, so I guess I do comedy for people with the same taste as me. Plus my mom would absolutely kill me if I told any offensive jokes. Um, and finally, my kind of top tip for comedy is is just be yourself. Be yourself on stage, but more. Um, so now that we've talked about some of the theories of comedy and a couple of my tips, I thought, because I've talked so much about musical comedy now, that I could sing a song that I wrote um, a couple of days ago, putting what I've said into practice. And I know we're kind of all stuck in the house right now due to coronavirus. And I really, really hope everyone is hanging in there. I know it's a very serious time 
Um, I work two days for the NHS. I know it's serious and in, in, in that fact. Um, and everyone's trying really hard to do everything they can. The rest of the time I'm self-employed. So I'm also very aware that everyone has had all that kind of work cancelled. Um, and it's great, obviously, that shows like this are still giving people the opportunity um, to work. But I thought that I would try and take a bit of a light-hearted look to try and make people have a bit of a laugh or a smile in a really difficult time. So what I thought I could do was write a song. A song about some of the things that you could do while you're stuck at home. Um, as I say, I hope everyone's hanging in there and I hope you enjoy this. This is Lockdown. So we're in lockdown, stuck in quarantine. I'm socially distant, but I think I've always been. So here's some ideas to keep you occupied, to keep our souls happy while we're hanging out inside. Call up your sister, tell her she's got class. FaceTime your granny and agree it's terrible to cancel mass. What's up your brothers, check their money's doing fine. Text your dad and suggest he pours your mother a glass of wine. Organize your cupboards, find some random herbs and spices. Discover you'll still never use that turmeric in this crisis. Look down the sofa for an extra bit of cash. We'll need it when this is over and we're all out on the lash. We're in luck. Down, stuck in quarantine I'm socially distant but I think I've always been So here's some ideas to keep you occupied To keep our souls happy while we're hanging out inside Go on and cut your fringe she have always wanted bangs Who cares if it goes wrong No one will see you're ostracized Have a major Netflix binge Maybe learn to dance Eat Doritos for your dinner While you're chilling in your pants Act out scenes of movies With your dog playing the lead Or pretend you're in Crufts And he'll win best in breed Or get out your playing cards Have a game of snap Maybe donate some toilet roll Unless you're full of crap We're in luck down, stuck in quarantine I'm socially distant but I think I've always been So here's some ideas to keep you occupied To keep our souls happy while we're hanging out inside Try some online yoga, learn to speak say Gather up your friends and have a Facebook live soiree Open up your wardrobe and have a fashion show Look into the mirror and tell yourself you're beautiful Do a hundred push-ups, iron everything in sight Eat your body weight and chocolate, tell yourself you'll be alright Maybe make a scrapbook, learn to play the violin What's up your football teammates while you're knocking back the gin? We're in luck down, stuck in quarantine I'm socially distant but I think I've always been So here's some ideas to keep you occupied To keep our souls happy while we're hanging out inside Write a song about a virus that's trying to ruin the world Stealing hopes and lives and money but it won't keep down this Irish girl If we all just pull together, keep each other entertained Won't be long till we are out there, dancing in the rain We're in luck down, stuck in quarantine I'm socially distant but I think I've always been Just keep your head up, wash your hands and keep confined Stay apart to stick together, most importantly, be kind Thank you so much for listening and happy isolating, everybody. <laughs>